This video is brought to you by MUBI, a curated online cinema streaming exceptional films from around the globe. Get your first month for free at MUBI.com slash Royal Ocean. The Rise of Skywalker is a lot of things. I don't think it's anywhere close to being director J.J. Abrams' best film, but I'd also argue that it isn't his worst film. It's a movie that definitely suffers from his weaknesses as a storyteller, but I do think that it's one that plays to his strengths as a visual coordinator. Look at that. And for whatever it's worth, I'd like to flag up what I think at least is the main thing that the film gets right. Finn, help me out over here. The more that Abrams has directed, the more he's moved away from the kind of frenetic handheld camera work that defined his earlier films and television shows, to locking the camera down to a dolly and executing these multiple focal point tracking shots, where he mixes multiple shot compositions into one single master by moving from one to the next instead of cutting. The one from the village, FM2187. That shot had five individual compositions inside one. The more he's directed, the more he's relied on shots like these. And the more that he's relied on them, the more ambitious and intricate they've gotten. I'll meet you back at the hangar. Ray, you can't just... Chewy. In fact, Rise of Skywalker features some of the longest sustained shots in his entire filmography. This shot on the planet Kijimi runs for 45 seconds and features nine individual compositions. They're everywhere. A lot of the credit here isn't just due to Abrams, but to this man, his longtime director of photography, Dan Mendel, and the entire camera department. Mendel once called setups like these dance floor shots, and it's easy to see why. What we're watching is an all-out choreographed dance between the actors, the cameramen, the dolly grips, and the focus puller. Zori, is this gonna work? When you're watching a shot like this, there are easily half a dozen people other than the actors working to execute the movement and timing just right. And when it works, it's a gem. Tell him we found our spy. Take the sequence in the cave below the surface of the desert planet Posada. A less experienced director would probably get coverage of this scene from a dozen different angles. But for the first minute of the sequence, Abrams and Mendel keep the camera locked to one angle only, and condense all of the action into just two shots. Where's Chewie? The camera pulls back and pushes forward, and the actors are not only allowed to occupy all sections of the frame, but move throughout them. And, well, sue me, but I gotta admit I think this is kinda funny. Directors shooting like this is nothing new. People have been calling J.J. Abrams' diet Spielberg about as long as he's been making movies, and although I wouldn't at all disagree with that, he doesn't just shoot like Spielberg. He shoots like a classical Hollywood director from the 50s or 60s, except injected with a shot of adrenaline. How do you know how to do that? The camera doesn't so much push or pan as it does snap and zip. Medallion's good. Clear for entrance into Hangar 12. Hang on, Chewie. Shots like these are one of the main components in the J.J. Abrams trademark toolbox of creating a sense of energy. That and whip panning into a shot. Seriously, there are a lot of whip pans. Nice flying, Lando! A few years back, I made a video about the films of Brad Bird, and one of the main things I talked about in that video was how much he loves the 1-2-3 multiple point shot composition. Abrams has always employed this kind of shot. But Rise of Skywalker is full to the brim, featuring more than any of his previous films. Someone start counting, please. One, two, three. One, two. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You get it. Personally, I love this kind of shot. It's got a real functionality to it. It doesn't get in the way or call a lot of attention to itself, and it's something that's inherently malleable and widely applicable. Whose ship is this? It can be moderated and adapted to fit just about any scene or situation. Heard you were spotted at Monk's Gate. 
You can stay in the same angle. You can dolly forwards or backwards. You can rotate 90 degrees, 180 degrees. The options are pretty unlimited. Abrams doesn't necessarily use it in any one specific way, although he does have a tendency to start wide and progressively push closer to an actor's face by the third point in the shot. You light speed skip? Yeah, well, it got us back here. Watch how this shot in the deck of the Star Destroyer moves. Captain, Kajimi is in range. Fire. Just for fun, here's pretty much the exact same shot in Force Awakens. We have an unsanctioned departure from Bay 2. Alert General Hux. Stop that fighter. And then another version that's pretty close to it from the first Star Trek. How the hell did that kid beat your test? I do not know. Directors have been staging shots like this for years, and it's easy to see why. It's simple, it's clean cut, and it does wonders to help keep the pace nice and lively. Even when the story literally makes no sense, it's always watchable. Wayfinder's there. I don't want to go too far into it, but I do think that this is the film's ultimate downfall. It's a gorgeously shot film in desperate search of a story. Its screenplay is kind of a chaotic mess. Go back to that sequence in the cave. What's that? Is that what? a speeder? An old one. This 28 second shot is staged with proper depth and moves with motivation, but there's something like eight individual plot points that the characters race through in that time frame. And the effect is, well, kind of exhausting. And he ended up down here. He was headed for his ship. Same thing happened to us, happened to him. So how did Ochi get out? He didn't. Take that idea and expand it out wide, and I think you have the film in its entirety. Still, I think it's fully possible to admire the art and craft of the staging and camera work while recognizing the faults of the storytelling. I love cinematography that moves like this, and I want to give credit where I think credit is due. For my money, Rise of Skywalker is, visually speaking, a natural and positive step in the evolution of Abrams' style. And for nothing else, it's just always refreshing to see a blockbuster director actually move the camera and actors with purpose and play with the depths of the frame itself. It's a shame about that script, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video is brought to you by MUBI, a curated online streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. Every day they premiere a new film, whether it's a timeless classic, a cult favorite you've never seen, or an acclaimed masterpiece, there's always something new to discover. Every film comes lovingly handpicked and curated. And because of that, I found that I end up spending way less time browsing and more time actually watching. It's like your own personal film festival that you can stream anytime, anywhere, on any screen or device. And right now they're offering a great deal. You can try MUBI for free for 30 days by going to MUBI.com slash Royal Ocean.